When Brian Singer began Fox's X-Men franchise back in 2000, we began to see a shift in film superhero costumes. You actually go outside in these things? What would you prefer? Yellow spandex? I understood that reference. Gone was the day of a lot of color and pop from the comics in favor of making these look realistic. Thankfully, superhero movies have learned not to shy away from that. Having said that, many MCU costumes still look nothing like the original comic book costumes, sometimes for the better, sometimes not. Don't forget to assemble and join the notification squad and subscribe. Scarlet Witch If you do this, they will never stop being afraid of you. I can't control their fear. Only my own. Scarlet Witch is one of the strongest characters in the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe, but it doesn't look that way from her appearance. Dressed in a long coat and a corset, the costume doesn't make her look especially exotic or out of the ordinary. Her original comics costume, on the other hand, makes her look much more mystical. While she isn't sporting a witch's hat and broomstick, Wanda Maximoff's first appearance back in 1964's Uncanny X-Men No. 4 shows a much different character than MCU fans may know. Clad in a red cape, a full scarlet bodysuit, and a swimsuit reminiscent of 60s fashion. This outfit seems like it takes a while to put on. Not only that, but you may notice something atop her head. Yes, that bizarre, and really dangerous if you think about it, headpiece is actually a staple of Scarlet Witch's original costume. While it may look silly, this is a character whose whole thing is just being weird. Sometimes it's hard. But sooner or later, every man shows himself. Just ask Maria Hill in Age of Ultron. Fun fact about her first appearance on the cover of Uncanny X-Men number 4, she's colored green. Emerald witch, anyone? Great, now she sounds like a female sidekick for the Green Goblin. I can't ask you to do this, Sam. You got out for a good reason. Dude, Captain America needs my help. There's no better reason to get back in. Falcon. There have been some parts of Sam Wilson's past that didn't make it into the MCU version, which bum us out. He can't talk to birds, and his loyal companion Red Wing is now a drone, for example. However, we're glad that the costume from his original appearance back in 1969's Captain America, number 117. In his original appearance, Wilson wasn't an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. or living in the United States. Instead, he was a Harlem-born man that got tricked by the Red Skull and was left stranded on a desert island. After Captain America, trapped in the Red Skull's body, don't ask, wound up on the island, Cap told him that he he needed to become a symbol to inspire others. Did you write that down first? Was it off the top of your head? And Wilson chose this. So from the very limited knowledge we know about falcons, we're quite certain that we haven't seen any orange or green falcons. We've seen gray, black, and brown ones, but no green or orange ones. Now wait a minute, CBR, you say? Spider-Man wears his red and blue, but no spiders are that color. Yes, but Spider-Man's costume doesn't suck. This open chest, sleeveless orange and green costume does indeed. This version of the outfit didn't last long before it was replaced by his classic red, yellow, and white costume. And thank God for that. Who is your master? I serve only myself. Iron Fist Marvel's Netflix version of Iron Fist has been rightfully criticized for many things. Personally for us, though, one of the biggest problems of the show was simply the look of Danny Rand. What was the thought process behind this design? Uh, put on some black pants and call it a day. <laughs> This uninspired costume choice makes it worse when you realize that his costume in the comics looks so awesome. Back in his first appearance in May 1974's Marvel premiere number 15, Danny Rand came storming out of the gate with a costume that caught your attention. After defeating the dragon Shu Lao the Undying, Rand dons the original costume and it hits you like a punch in the face. Giant v-neck, yellow belt, open chest for the symbol of the dragon and a yellow face mask. Can't forget the traditional kung fu shoes. For as zany as the costume looks, you know that when you see it, it is unmistakable that it's Iron Fist. Some may laugh at it, but you try laughing through a broken jaw and a mouth full of garbled teeth. Marvel, please, pretty please, can we get this costume at some point? Daredevil's first season of No Red Costume was hard enough. Speaking of... You were right. What you told me over the radio that night. Not everyone deserves a happy ending. Daredevil. The most popular and oldest character on Marvel's Defenders, Matthew Murdock, has been around the Marvel Universe for a long time. Dating back all the way to April 1964, Daredevil's original appearance showed a much different hero than the one familiar to most of the public. Instead of his red attire or even all-black costume from Season 1 of the Netflix show, we instead see red and… yellow. Oh yes, when we think of a Daredevil, that's the first thing that comes to mind is the color yellow, the color of cowardice. 
There actually is a reason behind this costume being brighter than his later ones. In the original inception of the character, Stan Lee wanted to focus more on the acrobatic nature of Matt Murdock. This could be seen in one of the original nicknames for the character, the Scarlet Swashbuckler. As a result, the costume's design was to be exciting and bold. However, not many people dug the costume, and in only a few issues it was changed to the dark red costume that is most familiar to everyone. Please don't hurt me. I'm not the bad guy, kid. Also worthy of note is that Daredevil went from having one D on his chest to two. Wow, we didn't know that breast implants were that popular in the 1960s. Hey yo! The Black Panther has been the protector of Wakanda for generations. Black Panther. Is there a bad Black Panther costume? Seriously, every superhero has at least one or two costumes throughout their history that look awful, but Panthers have been consistently awesome. However, his original comic costume is significantly different from his MCU attire, which, by the way, gorgeous. First appeared in Fantastic Four 1952 back in 1962, Panther was originally drawn by the legendary Jack Kirby. While Kirby is known for his dynamic, bold, and colorful characters, Panther's design is more subdued by comparison. That doesn't make it any less cool. Instead of being more detailed, armorish sort of look T'Challa has in the movies, this costume is simpler in appearance. It lacks the claws, but it does have a double cape, making him look more like a king. The ears also look more floppy rather than stuck upright. Finally, the King of Wakanda has a belt around his waist and across his chest. It's worth noting that in his first appearance he's attacking heroes, just like his first film appearance. Jeez, T'Challa, lay off the good guys, will ya? Vengeance has consumed you. I'm done letting it consume me. While his original costume is a few steps behind his MCU masterpiece, it still provides a good framework for his silver screen version to work with. You know, with all that power, I thought you'd head harder. Thor. Us fans may worship superheroes as mythical gods of modern times, but there's only one actual god on the Avengers squad. That, of course, is the god of thunder Thor. Fortunately, I am mighty. Thor has several looks throughout the years. Heck, he's even had multiple costumes in the MCU itself. None of the costumes, though, resemble his original Jack Kirby-designed costume from his Marvel beginnings in August 1962. While the films have dulled out the colors and made him look more warrior-like, this costume of Thor goes all out with the bold. Not only does he have a flowing red cape, but also red and black wristbands, a blue bodysuit, and who can forget his giant wingtip helmet. While some of his MCU appearances have him wearing a helmet, none of them stuck up to the majesty of those wingtips. All these elements made sense in the trippy world that was Jack Kirby's original Thor comics. I know, right? Let's start a petition to get Thor his wingtips in the MCU. If Loki can have his ridiculous headpiece, why can't our lord and savior Thor Odinson? All hail Thor. I'm a warrior and an assassin. I do not dance. Gamora. Virtually unknown before her appearance in 2014's Guardians of the Galaxy, the adopted daughter of Thanos, known as Gamora, is now one of Marvel's biggest superheroines. Are you going to tell the deadliest woman in the galaxy that she isn't? Her character in the film seems to enjoy the company of her friends, but seems to be shy or unwilling to enter a relationship with Star-Lord. I know who you are, Peter Quill, and I am not some starry-eyed wait here to succumb to your... your... Comic sorcery! If Peter Quill thinks she's hot now, he thankfully hasn't seen her original comic costume. We can only imagine how the design process of her costume began, but we're certain it went like this. <clears throat> so, we want to show that Gamora is a real badass, but not one to mess with. Eh, let's just put her in a fishnet bodysuit with a ridiculous V-cut line. And don't forget to add a bunch of gold skulls everywhere and bracelets as well, because, hey, danger! It's pretty obvious that the MCU version of her costume is pretty much suited for the current time and makes more sense to her current character. Fishnets aren't exactly a great means of protection, you know? I will fight this action. And in the end, see my wife and daughter again. Drax the Destroyer. We're going to take a wild guess here and say that almost nobody knew about Drax the Destroyer before his debut in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. With Dave Batista in the role, it was clear that the film wanted to show off his ridiculous physique. Yes! <laughs> That's probably why they went with Drax's modern era costume rather than his original outfit. Making his debut in Iron Man number 55, Drax's entire personality is completely different in his original comic appearance. While he did lose his family at the hands of Thanos and wants revenge, that's where the similarities end. The original Drax is quite sophisticated, and it's reflected in his outfit. A big purple cape, no tattoos, purple shirt, and pants along with a giant weightlifter style belt are all features of the original Destroyer. Heck, this guy didn't even carry around any big knives. What's up with that? The MCU Drax 
Drax would be ashamed of his comic counterpart if he ever found this out, so while the Drax of the 1970s may have looked like Incredible Hulk if he got his act cleaned up, modern Drax has a more distinctive look. Also, people can oogle at Batista's muscles. We can't forget that crucial fact. Just look at him. Look at so many muscles. My name is Ms. Marvel, and I'm here to welcome you to Earth. Captain Marvel while the Carol Danvers Captain Marvel isn't scheduled for release until March 2019, we've seen some concept art for the film. What we've seen, it's clear that the film is taking Danvers' current costume in the comics as inspiration. Not the first character in the Marvel Universe to take up the Captain Marvel name, Danvers actually took up the identity in the aftermath of an accident involving the original Captain Marvel known as Marvel. Yep, that's a lot of Marvels coming at you right now. Since she was an offshoot of Marvel, her original costume was highly influenced by the Kree Warrior's own uniform. This means a red and dark blue color motif with the Kree warrior symbol dead center on her chest. How is that different? Well, we're quite certain that Marvel wasn't rocking a crop top when he was flying through space. He also had his legs covered, whereas Danvers did not. In her original outfit, Danvers also wore the oldest trick to conceal your identity, a domino mask. For some reason, she also wore a long flowing scarf. Hey now, aesthetics matter for superheroes. Don't be dissing the scarf. I'm sorry. Did I step on your moment? Black Widow. Black Widow's shady and dark past has often been hinted at in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. While we haven't actually seen too much of it, it's clear that Romanoff doesn't like talking about it. We have thought it's the red in the ledger, but we thought wrong. It's actually her fashion choices she's trying to hide. In her first appearance back in Tales of Suspense number 52, Black Widow was much different than many know her currently. First, she was a villain, but really we think the worst thing she did was commit crimes against fashion. We don't exactly know what's going on here, but the lady is rocking some odd choices. Let's start with the obvious. Why is this spy wearing a full body? Body fishnet stocking. We know it's comic books, but what did Marvel writers think that Soviet spies looked like at the time? Did they get their research from adult films? But not only that, Romanoff is wearing a short black blue cape, it depends on the artist, a classic masquerade face mask. The entire outfit is just a bizarre mismatch of different elements and doesn't work well at all. Thankfully, the MCU went with something resembling her classic leather bodysuit. Yeah, it's not the original, but who's gonna complain about Scarlett Johansson in this outfit? Gotta say, that's awesome. That's it for our list. Which of these costume differences surprised you the most. Are there any of these you would want to see make their way into the MCU? We get that it's too late for these characters to change their original looks now, but perhaps we can take a gander at them through flashbacks. Leave a comment below and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to CBR for more awesome content. Thanks for watching!